Um, so let's say that this is the ratio of n to n0, one quarter. What would be the ratio of a to a0? C. Because they're proportional. And what would be the ratio of m to m0? One over four two. That's right. So they don't have to tell you that you only have one quarter of the nucleus is left. They could tell you that you only have one quarter of the original amount of decay, and then you can still plug in one quarter over here. Or they could tell you that only one quarter of the grams are left, and you can still plug in one quarter over here. Okay. Um, so these ratios are all equal to each other. Because as we've mentioned a couple times today, the number of nucleuses you have left is proportional to the number of decays per second, and that's proportional to the amount of mass that you have left. So if you know any of these fractions, you can plug them into this equation and use the equation to solve. Okay. Okay. Next, let's try to get, uh, let's try to figure out um, how long it would take for half the nucleuses to only have half the nucleuses left. How long will it take for half the original nucleuses? to decay. We can try to work on this problem together. How long would it take for half the original nucleus is to decay? Half the original nuclei to decay. Nuclei. All right, well, let's work through that. Let's try to use this equation um, to figure that out. Well, um, what can I start to by plugging into this equation? What information does this give me that I can plug into this equation? We know the original nucleuses, so we'll put the N or NO, so um, we don't have time, but we have constant K. Well, yeah, that's right. What should I put in for N over NO? Uh, for thousand or which number? I mean, Just for the information here. So this is a totally new problem, totally separate from the problems we've done before. We want to know how long it will take for half the original nucleuses to decay. So what can we plug into this equation? We need some numbers to plug into that equation, or at least one number. N over an O. What number can we plug in for that? Uh, Not sure? Well, um, if uh, half of the original nucleuses have decayed, 50%. how many are left? 50%. So what would N over N O be? Um, what would be the numerical value for N over N O? Yeah, that's right. It would be 0.5 or 1 half. So that was the answer to my question. I was asking what number should we plug in for this fraction? Well, we should plug in this number. Okay. The way to use an equation is to plug in some numbers. Um, well, in the, the problem told us to use the number 1 half, because it was asking about how long it will take for 1 half of the original nucleuses to decay. So we can plug in the natural log of 1 half equals negative kt. Okay, how can we rewrite the left-hand side of this equation? What's something we could do to rewrite that left-hand side and get rid of this fraction? 2 e e e, and then take natural log. Is, is that like what we're doing this? We could rewrite this using e, that's right. Yeah. But I'd like to keep talking uh, about yeah. natural logs here. How, how can I rewrite this using natural logs? ln1 minus ln2. Exactly. This is just the math we talked about before. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. Okay. But what is the natural log of 1? Uh, it's 0. That's something else that we talked about last time. The logarithm of 1 is 0. Because this logarithm is just, remember logarithms are exponents. This is just asking what exponent to the base e would give you a 1? Well, the exponent that gives you a 1 is 0. Okay. 
So this would now give us Now the question was asking how long will it take for half the nucleuses to decay? So what can we do now to, to finish off the problem? Which variable do we need to solve for? T, so we'll just divide by negative k, the ln t. That's right. So what do we get? T equals? Uh, negative ln, oh, it's going to be positive because it's going to be ln2 divided by k. Good. So this is the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Now now we're doing real problems like you might see on the test. This is a very typical type of problem. They might ask you, how long will it take for half the original nucleuses to decay? Well, this is how you would figure it out. On a real problem, they would have told you what k was. So then you okay. can plug in for k to find the t. They could have asked you, how long will it take for one quarter of the nucleuses to decay? Um, or for three quarters? Or how long will it take until you only have 10% left? Well, they, those would all be solved using the same method. Um, so this is a, a very standard way of solving these problems. Notice we didn't need to know the top or the bottom, we just needed to know the ratio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people here would waste a lot of time saying, how can I possibly solve this? They didn't tell me what n and n0 are. Well, we don't need to know those as long as we know what their ratio is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now going back to this, we figured out how long it will take for half the nucleuses to decay. Now there's a special name for that time. What's the name for the amount of time that it takes for half the nucleuses to decay? What's the name for the amount of time it takes for half the nucleuses to decay? I mean, half-life? That's the half-life. So we really figured out what's the half-life of this substance. Uh, so they could just as well have asked you, what is the half-life of this substance? So we need to put one over two there, too. The, Good yeah. point. Good point. We could put down this subscript to show we didn't just figure out any old time. We figured out the time that represents the half-life. Okay. Now, not, this is a problem that you might be given on the test, but this is also a, now a useful formula. Because this gives us a formula for calculating half-life. Mm -hmm. If you know the rate constant, that's why I didn't give you the rate constant, because I wanted this to be a general formula. If you know the rate constant, you can find the half-life. And also, if you know the half-life, you can find the rate constant. Because instead of solving this for t, we could have solved this for k. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you solve this for k, don't you get this? You get a symmetric equation. Yeah, it's good to be one. So um, if you want to find the half-life, you divide k into the natural log of 2. And if you want to find k, you divide t. So is there an inverse proportion? Is there inversely related? That actually is a good point. I wasn't thinking about that, but that is exactly right. This is an equation that shows that k and t are inversely proportional to each other. Mm -hmm. That's right. k and t are inversely proportional. That doesn't tend to be tested too much in this area, but it's good that you notice that. k and t are inversely proportional. What will be tested is you'll see a lot of problems where you're given k and asked for the half-life. Or you might be given the half-life and asked for k. Or more commonly, you have to do this as one step in the problem. So we can add this now to our list of um, useful equations. Or maybe I should write it like this. I guess this is the form of the equation that we're going to use the most often. Actually, usually we're given the half-life and we have to figure out k. So I'll write it like this. But if you know this equation, you should be able to figure out how to figure out the half-life if you know k too. Okay. Um, and we just proved this equation. Of course, you wouldn't want to prove it on the test, but the, the point is this is a type of calculation that you would have to do. For example, you would have to do the same thing if they asked you for how long it will take to have only one quarter of the original nucleuses, or three quarters. So this was an important technique that you really will need on the test. But if they ask you for how long it takes for half to decay, now you can just use this cookbook formula. Mm -hmm. By the way, what is the natural log of 2? Let's find that on your calculator. Point 0.693? Point I thought it was 0.653. No, I think you're right. Natural log of 2. You're right, 0. 0.693. So sometimes this is just written as 0. 0.693 over oh, the half-life. Okay, half -life. it's like even over. Yeah, okay. but uh, that's not how they put it in the book. So I'm going to leave it like this, because this is more accurate. Okay. Um, and also this sh sh reminds us about how we prove it from here. Okay, so I'll just leave this as a natural log of 2. Okay, so this tells us if we know, um, so notice how these equations go together. In order to use this equation, you need to know k. Mm -hmm. In order to use this equation, you need to know k. But what if you're not given k? What if you're given the half-life? Then we can find k by ln 2 divided by t. And then we can plug that into here. Yeah. 
So those, that's a very common pattern for problems, to have to do this first and then do this. All right, I'll erase this now. So we call the K uh, rate constant, yeah? Yeah, K is the rate constant. K is the rate constant, and this is the half-life. So this is an equation that shows you how to figure out the rate constant from the half-life or the half-life from the rate constant. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm 